What's going on guys? This is CH again. I think this might be my last video of the night. We're here with our 14th video on our introduction to HTML and CSS. And our last video we talked a little bit about CSS on our index page, which we refer to as on-page CSS or internal CSS. In this video I'm going to show you about off-page CSS or external CSS. Now for this video we're going to source our style Dot CSS page that we created two or three videos ago, the one with the uh, reset CSS syntax, and then copied it into our CSS file. Um, for, um, I keep saying syntax. If you guys never heard that before, it's just another word for code. I probably should have established that earlier off in the videos. But um, yeah, you can use it for any language. Syntax is in HTML, PHP, JavaScript, Ruby whatever okay so now I'm gonna show you how to source in our style dot CSS page so let's go over here you can delete all that information from the last video all that stuff we had in here so remember in the first couple of videos when we were talking about our body tags when where uh, all our content goes and where all the information that we wanted our browser to recognize go in the head tags up here well that's exactly what we're gonna do because we're gonna create a link in our head tags that source in our style dot CSS file so to create a link in a directory in HTML, this is the tag structure that we need. We need to link ref, which is different than an a ref, which connects web page to web page. A link ref connects your index page to your directory pages. So we'll, what did we name it? Style.css. Yeah, I'm tired. Uh, and there's a couple more pieces of information we need for the browser to recognize this. We need to let it know that it is a style sheet. And we need to let it know that it is, in fact, text and not JavaScript, but CSS. And for media, you could probably get away without filling in your media and your type right here. But you never know how it's going to read on you know, some foreign device or an Android. I don't have an Android, so I can never be able to test it anyways. Just Better be safe than sorry, just fill out all the necessary information, but I still think we could, it could source in this page without these two pieces of information right here. So for the media, we're on a browser. We want it to be screen. If we were creating a mobile device, we would put mobile right here, but we're not. And another thing about our link tag is that we do not need to close it. It's just like an image tag. Remember how an image tag, we just leave it like that, just let it hang like that. Well, a link tag is going to source it in without a closing tag perfectly fine just like that so I'm gonna save it actually I'm gonna write something here in our body I'm just gonna write uh, hello world now village part and okay so we need to go ahead and create a selector and give this some CSS on our style.css folder and pulled in here so we're not gonna leave we're not going to put anything here except the selector, and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to go to my style.css page. Here it is. Here's with our CSS reset information. Now I'm going to go to the body, and I'm going to create a new selector. And I'll talk about selectors in the next video, but this is going to be the second one we've talked about. This is a selector right here, body, ol, ul. This is a universal selector that pretty much covers everything in your body. This is going to cover every ordered list or unordered list, block quote, table, we can get rid of this table now too. This is the one we created a couple of videos to make an example. But what we need to do to create uh, CSS for that text that I just filled in in our body, I'm going to go ahead and give it an ID hashtag. We have to. You have to give it this selector. It's this, the tic-tac-toe or the hashtag. And you can call it anything you want as long as you can remember it. So I will just go ahead and call this text. And you don't, no spaces in between here, all lowercase, just leave it like that. And now you need to open it up with, what are these, brackets or braces? I think they're brackets. And again, I just want to change the color. I'll go ahead and change the color to green. And make sure you got an opening bracket and a closing bracket. So here's your... Here's your CSS attribute, and you need a semicolon right here. You can space this apart. This doesn't matter. You can give it a space right there. And then I'm giving it the color that I want, and I need to close it with a semicolon because I, I need to let my browser know that this is the end of a statement. In any programming language, you need to close it with 
semicolon. So that should do it. So now we need to let the browser know that this is what we want to turn green. So I got to create my div tag or div ID with what do we create it as? Text. So this represents the hashtag sign and this is whatever we named it. So that's good right there. And I'm going to close my div tag and I'll go back to the browser, reload it. Voila, green village park. Perfect. And you see how with that, uh, that CSS um, reset thing, the reset that we added, that we found on Google, this is perfect because look, there's no margins in here now. Remember before our text was coming down to right about here from the left and from the top. So we're all set to go. All our pix pixels are perfect. And in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the selectors. In the video after that, we're really going to jump in into creating our website and we're going to go ahead and create the the header in the second video. So next video is selector and the one after that is we're going to dive right into our header on our homepage. So subscribe to my page if you guys feel like it and uh, good luck with this and I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video.